join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Bible Tract Echoes. I hope you're having a great day and a great week for that matter. I hope you're walking with the Lord. I hope you're spending time in the Word of God every day. And thank you for taking this time for us to meet together on the Word of God. I have my Bible open today to Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Here in the United States, we have a saying. It goes like this. A picture is worth a thousand words. Well, we understand what that means. If you show us something in a picture format, we, our minds seem to grasp it more readily. Now, some of you out there listening to me, you'd rather read about it than see it. Uh, I'm more, you show it to me. Uh, you show me by example. You paint a picture for me. I'll get it far more quickly. We're going to come today to look at how redemption is described here in four pictures. But before we get to Psalm 107, I just want to quickly add that, that Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of Bible Tracts Incorporated, and it would be our pleasure to put into your hands a sample packet of our English tracts. Bible Tracts Incorporated has been, since 1938, printing good gospel tracts, helping people share the gospel and helping extend their ministry because sometimes we can't always verbalize the gospel message. We sometimes only have the opportunity to pass out a gospel message to someone in passing. Now listen, you desire to see people come to Christ, right? Yes. I want to see people come to Christ, right? Yes. Your local church, you want your missionaries to see people come to Christ. Well, then let's use all the tools that are viable that God uh, fit into God's framework of rightness of things to do to communicate the gospel and extend its ministry. Gospel tracts is a key one. And if you are not using tracts, then I want to give you some tracts. Now, listen. At the end of the broadcast, Pastor Ken, our announcer, is going to be giving a mailing address. In a moment, I'm going to be giving you our telephone number and our website address so that you can use one of those means and contact us and say, I would like a free sample packet of your tracks. Now, have you got a piece of paper and a pencil ready? Here we go. You can contact us over the telephone by calling area code 309-828-6888. One more time, the area code here is 309-828-6888. If you're a person who likes to use a computer, you can contact us using our website. Our website address is very simple. It's the name of our ministry. Uh, where this is Bible Tracks Incorporated. We're just going to abbreviate the word incorporated to INC. So it's www.bibletracksinc.org. Org. Let me tell, give you that one more time. Our website address is www.bibletracksinc.org. As I said, at the end of the broadcast, our physical mailing address will be given. You can use any one of those three ways to get a hold of us. Write to us, won't you please? Ask for a sample packet. Okay. In Psalm 107, we have here a, uh, a great psalm that's going to give to us a picture of uh, what redemption is really like. In, in particular, what people's lives are like before they receive Christ and what redemption does for them. My friend, if you're listening to me today and you do not know Jesus Christ, there are four pictures here of what you are like now, four pictures describing the same condition, but just describing it from four different vantage points. My friend, if you do not know Christ, this is a psalm for you. If you are, are a believer and you're struggling in seeing uh, your need to give out the gospel, then I submit to you, if you will see people in the conditions that are mentioned here, it'll prod your heart, I think, to be a, a more outgoing person and deepen your desire to want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me start by just simply reading here for us the first three verses of Psalm 107 because they help describe the, the reason, the design, the goal of the psalm. Psalm 107 verse 1, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gather them out of the land from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Now stop. Why are we, do we need this psalm? What is the design? What is the goal of this psalm? This psalm is intended for us to, according to verse 1, aid us in our worship. Well, give thanks unto the Lord for his goodness, for his mercy endureth forever. My friend, when you and I come into the presence of God privately uh, for our personal worship or corporately, we need to go in there to uh, honor God for his mercy, honor God for his greatness. This psalm was intended to help us give thanks and praise God for his mercy. Not only is it to help us in our worship, it's to help us with our words. Verses 2 and 3 say, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, verse 3, and gather them out of the lands uh, from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. By the way, God is concerned about saving all kinds of people from all kinds of nationalities, from all kinds of the end of the earth, north, east, south, and west. We sing the little song. We teach it to our children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, east, west, north, south. Now, the directions are not part of the song, but that is implied. We sing it in our little song, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. This psalm says that God has been redeeming people from the four corners of the earth. And we're told in verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say, so. Well, what are we supposed to say? The second half of verse 2 says, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We ought to rejoice regularly. And as people come to Christ and they stand up and say, let me tell you what Jesus did for me. My life was like this. Jesus Christ died on the cross. I received him as my Savior, and now Christ has done this for me. My friend, let us never forget that a key part of our witnessing is telling people, this is what my life was like. Now, we don't ingrandize, we don't glorify sin. The Bible is very pointed about that. But we need to tell people, this is what my life was like. But then somebody introduced me to Jesus Christ. They told me of his love and his shed blood at Calvary. And this is what Christ has done for me since the day I received him as my Savior. My friend, the goal of this psalm is to help us worship, to help us with our words. But there's one more thing. I'm going to this psalm. There are 43 verses. The very last verse of Psalm 107 says this. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. This psalm was not only given to us to affect our worship, to affect our words, but to affect our wisdom. We're told here that we will know and understand more of the loving kindness of God. How we do that when we grasp more readily the, the life that we were living, the condition of that we were in, the condition that lost people are still in, and what God and his mercy will do for them. There are four pictures in this psalm in the first 32 verses. We've looked at the verses 1, 2, and 3. Beginning at verse 4, we find people here, they're pictured as lost travelers, as lost travelers. I begin at verse 4. They, talking about people who have been saved from their sin, they wandered, past tense now, this is describing their life as it used to be, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way, they found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted to them, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men." That last verse I read, verse 8, is going to be repeated a number of times in this psalm at the end of each of these four pictures. Now, as we come here, we're in these verses 4 through 9, lost people are described as lost travelers, lost souls. That's not a new term for us, people being lost. We talk about people being lost in their sin, uh, lost and on their way to hell. My dear friend, if you are here, if you are listening to me today, and you do not know Jesus Christ, you are lost. Oh, you may know exactly where you're at. You may know exactly where you're going in life. You may have your life planned about what you're going to do. But as it relates to spiritual things and getting to heaven and knowing God, you are as lost. You are blind in your sin spiritually. My friend, notice that in verse 4 here, it describes them, they wandered in the wilderness. You're in a wilderness place spiritually. It's the idea of a desert place. There's no landmarks there. 
I, I have never been in a, in a large desert. I'm told by those who have been there that it's so easy to get uh, con, uh, turned around because the sand shifts and there are no landmarks. And where I had grew up, there were mountains around from time to time, and, and you could see where the mountain were, is and was, and you could judge where you are in location. Well, I'm south of the mountain, I'm north of the mountain, and so on. Sometimes there are river beds. You say, oh, I know this is, this is the river. This is a, a stream here. I know what this is. I know where it heads. If I follow it, I'll get to a particular destination. In the desert, you don't have that. You're in a solitary place. You're wandering alone. My friend, even though multitudes, thousands of people are lost in their spiritual condition, yet you wander alone. It says in verse 4, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. They're in a deserted place. Not only are they in a wilderness place, they're homeless. There's no city to dwell in. My friend, uh, for those that receive Christ, they're going to go to heaven. Heaven is described as the new Jerusalem. It's a city where God dwells and the people of God dwell. And there's going to be fellowship and, 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 and together. People are going to see each other and, and, and enjoy each other's company, enjoy the presence of God. But hell is just the opposite. It's not a place of fellowship and community. It's a place of aloneness. It's a place of, of bleakness, of homelessness. My friend, you may have all of this world's goods, but without Jesus Christ, spiritually, you are homeless. Now, you may not like that description, but I didn't write it. That's what God says in his own word, Psalm 107 and verse 4. We're told here, look at the need of lost people. Verse 7, he, God, led them forth. This is what God did for the people when he saved them. He led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. He led them by the right way, by the right path. Wherever the Lord leads is right. You know why? Because he is right. He led them to a right place, a place of rest, a place of habitation, a home, something spiritually they did not have before. My friend, without Christ as Savior, you are homeless on your way to hell and you cannot go to heaven. Oh, but you know what the answer for this is? You know what these deep people did? Look at verse 6. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of their distresses. Verse 8 says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works to the children of men. My friend, people that do not know Jesus Christ as Savior are pictured in Psalm 107, verses 4 through 9, as lost travelers. You know the only hope for them? For God to lead them. My friend, you may be fighting God. You may have a friend of you that talks about Jesus Christ, that tries to give you a Bible tracts, that tries to get you to talk and to, to explain to you Bible verses, and you want nothing to do with it. My friend, they are trying to be your best friend. They're trying to show you the right path that God may lead you out of your condition spiritually being lost and dead in trespasses and sins and brought to the light of Christ, to the direction of Christ, to salvation, to everlasting life, to forgiveness, release from guilt, release from condemnation, and be given a home in heaven. Now, I submit to you that uh, sometimes we go to the doctor and the doctor has to give us some awful news. You have cancer. Terrible news, but you know what? At that moment in time, that doctor is our best friend. He tells us what we really need to hear. My friend, if you have a good friend telling you about Christ, he's probably really your best friend. Your lost travel without Christ, come to him today. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.